This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. Well, while doing a preventative maintenance, one of our technicians noticed that the compressor for the walk-in cooler is making a horrible sound. Now, the walk-in is still maintaining temperature. The customer has no complaints. But I personally wanted to come over here and see what's going on because I want to get ahead of the issue before it becomes a Friday night compressor change out. So we're going to jump on the roof and take a look at this compressor. Uh, that doesn't sound good. There are rocks bouncing around in that compressor. I am absolutely blown away this thing is still running and it actually just satisfied on me. Go figure. That one's running off, should be running off of pressure. So the system's probably got high pressure right now, but I'm gonna put some gauges on it and watch it cycle. I just wanna verify, but I mean, I can tell you there's rocks in that thing, so it's bad. Remember, when you come across these service valves, if it has a packing like this, you wanna loosen it before you actuate the valve. It'll help to save it and make it last longer. Okay. It is running. Listen to that sound, man. We definitely got a compressor change out coming up. Question is, do I have to do it right now or can I schedule this for tomorrow? Fun stuff. It's one of those early mornings. I was supposed to get up at like, or I was supposed to leave at 4.30. Luckily, I'm not scheduled. I just wanted to get up early because I'm going out to the desert and it's going to be hot, but thank goodness for cruise control too. It's one of those little little things that you really, really appreciate. This is the first van I've ever had that had cruise control. And uh, I don't know, there's something about being able to pull your foot back and relax that makes it super nice, but I want to point something out. It's really windy outside today and I've got my ladder tied off, but it's really important if you don't bring your rope down to where the two ladders connect, theoretically, see I have it tied up there. If this was to blow away, the ladders could still separate the two ladders. So that's why I have it shackled together right here too. So that way, if it was to try to blow away, it doesn't try to pull the ladders apart. All right, we're up on the roof. It is miserably windy today. Just a strong, steady gust, which just makes it ridiculous. My hat's trying to blow off my head, so. It's okay, it's just one more thing to add to the list of problems, but uh, we have no 115 volt power and the restaurant is not here yet. Usually I have to plug in down in the building and then run an extension cord up. So we're gonna use my cheater plug. You gotta be careful with these. Um, I am gonna use the unit power. So what I'm gonna do is I have power turned off right now at the breaker, which happens to be on the roof. And uh, I'm gonna disconnect everything for the compressor, energize the circuit, hook up my cheater cord, and then use this power right here to power the recovery machine and everything. That's how the customer gets here probably. I'm not in a huge rush and it's not really hot. It's only about 86 outside right now. Okay? So I'm not getting all fancy. I didn't put core removal tool on this guy. I mean, I could certainly make it go faster. I'm not inverting my tank. I am using bigger hoses, but I'm just using my gauge manifold set because, you know, I got plenty of time. All together, we recorded or re recovered just under eight pounds, so right at eight pounds of gas. Got the nitrogen hooked up. Uh, I start out with an initial on the test feature, so that way I can make sure that I hear the refrigerant moving all the way, or the nitrogen moving all the way through the system. So we're going in the liquid line, pumping all the way down, coming back up here. Then we turn it down to the braze function, and then just let it go. Uh, there's going to be some parts where it's not going to get nitrogen while you're brazing. You know, it is what it is. You can't always be perfect.
why I can't have nice tools. I always use them for things I shouldn't. Yeah, we're gonna take a drop of the nine log, put it right on the swivel part, kind of spin the flare nut, so that way it doesn't bind up. And don't grab a hot flare nut. All right, we're almost done. Compressor's brazed in. Um, I need to cut this uh, suction dryer out of the picture because we don't need it anymore. So I'm gonna do that real quick. Just put a piece of pipe to fill the gap and uh, then we'll get the vacuum pulling on this thing. We are hooked up and ready to evacuate. We're gonna open the gas ballast right over here, turn this guy on, and then once we get down to a reasonable 
1,000-ish microns, I'll close the gas ballast and we'll let it keep going. I'm actually gonna stop while this is happening, clean up my messes a bit and take a lunch. I brought my lunch today, so sit down in the shade, eat my lunch, let it evacuate. All right, I'm sitting down over here eating my lunch. Just got some tuna and crackers. Um, the vacuum's kind of stalling out at 3,200 microns and uh, the oil looks really cloudy. So I'm gonna do a quick little oil change on this guy. I ended up throwing a second hose on there because it was just dragging ass. And it's starting to get hot too. It's 107 in the shade, so. But I'm just doing the electrical while I'm waiting. So when I first came up to this compressor to look at the noise, the sight glass was flashing and I thought it had something to do with the damage in the compressor, but I'm starting to think maybe not. I think that this system has a leak. I highly doubt that it has any leaks on my braze joints, so I'm gonna check those right now. Um, uh, I guess in hindsight, I should've done a nitrogen pressure test, but even still, I mean, I gotta get this thing up and running. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of gas in here, leak check all my braze joints, make sure that there's nothing there. And if there's none of my braze joints, then we're gonna fill it up, let it run, and I'll do a leak check downstairs and see what we can do. I, I, I highly doubt they're gonna approve me to fix any other thing, anything else on this right now. I really wanted to replace the whole condensing unit and stuff, but um, you know, their times are tight, so they just wanted to go low cost. So uh, I'm gonna put some gas and see what happens. About 50 PSI in there, not much, but I just wanna see if there's any leaks on my stuff. If there's not, then I'll go ahead and charge it up because up here is the only leaks that I can't fix while pumping it down potentially, like the discharge line and stuff. Uh, well, looks like we might have to check that rotor lock. Maybe we got something on that rotor lock. Check this guy over here. Oh, uh, maybe just the service valve. Those things leak. Keep checking all this. Check my flare nuts. Nothing here. Nothing here. The discharge line is the biggest one because that's the one you can't fix. Yeah, there's no leaks on the discharge line. No leaks on the suction line. I gotta look into this rotor lock right here because there's something funky going on there. Stupid packing. Those packings do that. That's why when you loosen these packings, you gotta be careful. It might have been just that that was driving me nuts. That's taken care of. I'm just gonna leak check the rest of everything else with the bubbles around this area right here just to make sure there's nothing funky going on there. Hope nothing blows up. And running. Remember this is a reciprocating compressor, piston driven, so it doesn't matter which way it goes. So we don't gotta worry about rotation. Running, sight glass is flashing. We're gonna let the system operate for a little bit, then we'll clear it out, but we just don't wanna overload it. According to the Tecumseh app, we're allowed to run 10.9 amps and we're right at about 11.2, so we're not too bad. We're just gonna let it run and pull the box down in temp. I'm gonna go down there and see how it is, how cool it is. It probably didn't get that warm in the box. This is a rather long reach, so I had to have separate probes down here. Um, but my box temp right now is still at, it's still pretty warm and we've already got 13, yeah. So we're 43 degrees in the box and we've got about 13 degrees super heat. That, that's not bad. I'm not gonna adjust that expansion valve for that. It's probably gonna settle down a little bit more as the box temp comes down. We're gonna check the other coil. So that's that coil and then now I'm gonna jump over onto this one and see what this one's running at. And the second coil is pretty much the same. So, we're good. I don't see any problems. Yeah, this one's at 10. But like I said, they're both throttling as the box is coming down in 10. And over here next to this coil, let's see what the box temp is. 41 degrees, yeah, so we're doing good. We're gonna uh, wrap this one up and tell them to keep an eye on it. All right, um, I just cut the head off this compressor as I have not opened it yet. What I imagine to find, I'm thinking that there's a broken motor mount is my thought because of the way that it sounded when I was carrying it. Um, I don't think there's going to be any valve damage. I do expect to see some copper plating though. 
Um, you can obviously see a mess. Now I haven't opened this up yet. It's still full of oil too. I didn't even drain any of the oil. So, all right. So this is uh, what the inside looks like so far, but we've got to uh, dig in a little bit deeper. I'm gonna have to take some stuff apart. So I'm gonna open it up a little bit more. Um, so far in here, doesn't look bad. I really don't see too many shavings from me cutting it. I tried to keep as much out as I could. Doesn't look. Don't see any copper plating up here, but I'm sure we're gonna see it as we get into the, the shaft and everything. We'll probably see a bunch of copper plating. All right, this is not looking good. This oil has got some thick sludge in it. Okay, little history. There was a burnout on this system about eight or nine years ago. And when that happened, we installed a new condensed unit, high acid filter dryer and all that different stuff, okay? So I'm thinking that this sludge that I'm seeing floating around, it's like real thick, thick oil. Like you had runny oil, but then you had the real thick stuff. See, watch, I'll pour it into here and I'll show you guys, okay? So you've got the runny stuff, but then look at right down here, this sludge that's coming out, just real thick, ugh real thick so whatever that is is nasty okay um, but as I was taking the oil out I found these now I thought this was a reed at first but it looked and there's also some I don't know if this is from me cutting it up there's some like sticker in here but um this I think went across here right across here and held this guy on which I believe, if I remember right, is a suction line coming in, I think, if I remember right. But yeah, there's a piece that went across like that and connected right there. And it's completely sheared off. But that doesn't account for what this is. This is another piece that I found in the bottom of the compressor. So there was some destructive action going on here, but the weird thing is it still had compression. So that's why this is like some sort of a bracket. That's interesting, but all right, we're gonna keep going. All right, let's see what the valves look like. They're there, they're intact. They're not broken. Definitely loose. Oh, no, they're there. Don't see any problem. Let's get this one out. It's stuck on the nest. See that this this oil that's in here is not healthy, for sure. All right, let's uh, move the pistons. Doesn't look like anything was hitting the piston. I don't see any damage on the piston. So, and I don't see any in the cylinder. So the valve. That's why it still had compression. There's nothing wrong with the compressor or the valves, there was just something floating in the bottom of the compressor. I still haven't figured out where this is from. This thing was obviously getting hit by something though because look at how twisted up it is. And this strap going across, interesting. Interesting, interesting. All right, well, we're gonna keep going. It's very interesting. The only place I'm seeing copper plating is right here, which is pretty good. Obviously, it's going to happen where you're going to have a high concentration of heat, which would be right there. But, yeah, that's that's pretty good. I expected to see a lot more copper plating in this compressor. This was a big system that had been cut down. I think I said in the beginning of the video, this used to control the entire restaurant medium temp when it was on a parallel compressor system and when we had to take it off we individually broke everything down each one and gave them their own condensing units but okay well I'm still trying to figure out where this came from this is a mystery to me I see where this came from but I haven't figured out where that came from yet I figured it out it came off of right here so let me pull this out so right here, I believe this is the muffler. Forgive me if I'm not naming that right, but I think that is the muffler. Cause, and this piece fits perfectly right there. So this broke off. Why, I don't know. 
fell into the bottom of the compressor. And then this broke off too. There's no, doesn't look like there's any piston damage. There's no valve damage. It's very interesting. All right, well, mystery solved. That was kind of a fun one. I like to find the 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 root cause. Well, I, I never really found the root cause, but I, I like to investigate to figure out what was going on, okay? I never found out what break broke that little bracket that held the muffler down, basically. Um, I, I never got to the bottom of that, but I did go back and follow up. Everything's been fine. This video was actually shot probably all the way back in June. Um, so yeah, it's, everything's been fine. We've been back to that restaurant several times to do preventative maintenance services and everything's been going good on it. But, um, that system too was a parallel rack system. I don't know if I've ever shown it in a video before. It was a very, very small system. Uh, we had two compressors, they were piped in parallel and, uh, they ran the entire medium temp of the restaurant. So when the restaurant was built, they had two medium temperature walking coolers they had uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven evaporator coils that were in different reach-in coolers, and everything ran off of that rack system. Um, and what happened was they lost one compressor. Uh, this I was out of town many years ago on vacation and they lost one compressor and we were able to isolate it and they still had enough. It wasn't that much of a demand. So they were able to run the system off of one compressor. And then uh, we had given them a quote to replace the compressor and the customer really wanted to get away from that system. So they had to pull everything off of that rack and do individual condensing units. Apparently they had this same prototype, the same restaurant style built in another area too, and they were just having a whole bunch of problems with it. So that's why they wanted to go to individual condensing units. Of course, that was gonna increase their power usage and, and all that stuff, but most of the time these customers aren't really into the whole high energy efficiency stuff. They're, they just want simplicity and ease of use, you know? Um, but it was a pretty neat system. You know, I don't do any of the supermarket stuff, uh, you know, any of that fancy stuff, but it was always fun to work on that. Unfortunately, they just didn't want to fix it. So anyways, that's not what we had today or in this video. This video was just the replacement compressor had failed, like, like you guys saw that had failed on a preventative maintenance or we found it on a preventative maintenance, you know, just making noise. Again, the customer had no idea, but we just told him like, Hey, we got to get to this before it becomes a problem, you know? Um, and yeah, it was just pretty much straightforward compressor change out. No big deal on that. I also didn't show it in the video, but I ended up changing the compressor contactor too, because that thing was just completely burnt. This is located out in the desert where we have a lot of issues with the sand blowing around and stuff. So we always, you know, we're pretty proactive with replacing those contactors. Uh, I contemplated changing the fan motors, but I didn't again, they were in the midst of the COVID thing. So as we still are, and, um, we're just trying to, you know, give them as much bang for their buck basically, you know, and you don't, you don't want to spend on everything and they seem to be doing okay. We made it pretty much through the summer as we're coming towards the tail end of it. So I think we were okay on that. Um, but you know, cutting these compressors open, if you guys haven't done so, I highly encourage you guys to do it. It really does help you. I mean, I still don't understand everything, but you know, it really helps you to visualize what goes on inside of a compressor and you know, what happens when you have a weak suction valve or a weak discharge valve or, you know, different stuff like that. It really does help. And to be able to see copper plating in the compressors, this one had barely any, um, but to be able to see it helps you to understand why it's so important to pull a proper evacuation. Uh, also talking about evacuations, you guys saw that I ran into some problems. I couldn't get my perfect vacuum. So basically it wouldn't pull below, you know, 500. It was just hanging right around eight, 900. And that was as low as I can get it. And the decay wasn't great. It wasn't horrible, but it wasn't great. And, uh, I did have now to, to preface that I did have that service valve cap on when I was doing the vacuum, but it was still pulling crap through even with a cap on. So then when I pressurized the system, I found that it was leaking at the packing. And of course, because I had loosened the packing. So those packings, they always leak. And especially on these systems, man, you're never going to get ultimate perfection. It, it pretty much doesn't exist, at least on the commercial side, because you have so many mechanical parts in these systems, solenoid valves, especially if it's ever had refrigerant in it before, then you've got contaminated oil all over the system that has refrigerant still boiling out of it. It's just a nightmare. If you ever do nitrogen pressure tests, 
gas or sweeping with nitrogen, you're going to run into problems when you're trying to evacuate after that. So just understand, at least from my experience, you're never going to see a perfect vacuum. You're never going to see perfection. But of course, I always strive for perfection. I always try my best to do what I can. But you also have to be practical and know when enough is enough and you just got to get the system back up and running. Um, really, really appreciate you guys taking the time to make it to the end of these videos. Uh, do me a favor. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. Uh, as I say all the time, you guys, if you're interested in supporting the channel, there's a couple different methods that you can do. I have a Patreon page. You're more than welcome to become a Patreon member. You can also become a YouTube channel member. Uh, I have merch available at HVACRvideos.com. we got shirts and hats if you guys are interested in purchasing, purchasing any of those. We also have uh, an affiliate code through True Tech Tools, the TrueTechTools.com. If you guys are interested in purchasing any tools, check out TrueTechTools.com. If you like their pricing, I have an offer code, big picture, one word. And uh, if you use that, you'll save 8% on your order. And if you guys are considering a True Tech Tools purchase, do me a favor, shoot me over an email, let me know what you're gonna buy. I can shoot you over an affiliate link that'll also help me a little bit more, okay? Again, really appreciate it. Uh, Monday evenings, 5 p.m. Pacific, I go live on YouTube. And also Friday evenings, 6.05, or I'm sorry, uh, Friday evenings, let's see, it's 6.05 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, we go live on the HVAC Overtime YouTube channel with myself and my buddies. Uh, if you're interested, go check out the HVAC Overtime channels. Give it a subscription. You guys will see us pop up every Friday we do shows. So uh, that's pretty much it. We will catch you on the next one, okay?